for no, just transcribed so, you don't miss so my, that my, you hang on my every word. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You're gonna give us some good quotes. I'm gonna drop some knowledge, you. baby. Yeah. I'm dropping knowledge. <laughs> Pick up on Probably every word. Experts. Squeeze you the knowledge out. <laughs> so essentially, though, what we're doing is Nicole. Nicole is running <laughs> a lot of the rank. <laughs> The Ranku stuff the right now, so she's gonna she's gonna chime in with some questions, but I'm also helping her out with content for the new Ranku site that's up. So trying to build out because on the West site there's the resources blog, and so we want to go ahead and start building that out also for Ranku. And so essentially what we're doing is we figured you know we want to start building out the content there and having content that is not necessarily just Ranku promotional. Basically right. the idea being to show people that they have a problem, what the problem is, that they're likely not even aware that they even have in the first place. Right, which really um, Red Crew could help solve. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to put together an article around the idea of what factors impact you know, an institution's conversion rate for their programs. And you know, I think that it's one of those things coming from you, you doing UX design and looking at an institution's website for their programs, and recognizing that there is an impact on you know how it's designed and whether students inquire or not right. and so i wanted to get a little basically your insights into that sure uh i'll try to frame it as best and i think i was trying to organize my thoughts a little bit too i mean obviously um when you're talking about conversion rates we're talking about lead capture rates so I, you know having a form on a page driving inquiry right so mm -hmm. if we look at that at the most simplistic level that's what we're going to talk about as the success metric today, right? I mean, obviously, there's other ones you can consider application, or even how getting you know butts in the seats, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's let's call it, um, yeah, um, class starts. Um, that's all right. We're, you're good. You're just for us. This is totally. It's not for us. No, no, don't butts don't don't so sense it really, yourself. You know, you look at so uh, I'm going to gauge this largely on around just success metric uh, being a lead capture rate. So. Um, there's things um, that we have control of and things you don't, but obviously if you look at, there's many contributing factors mm -hmm. too, um, and some of them are not just directly on the page, right? So, um, but let, let's just start with, um, I think I started writing stuff down here, so oh, cool. trying to organize my thoughts for you guys. So um, I've kind of started breaking it around into five categories, so uh, obviously um, motivations, uh, obviously that's talking to a user's intent. Uh, why are they coming to your page content, you know, and, and what we do here on our end is actually having and meeting the content. So if someone is coming and thinking that they're looking for, uh, they may be wanting off the top of the head, they want more organized. Maybe they want course data. Maybe they want uh, tuition costs. Maybe mm -hmm. they're demanding that right up front. So that is going to have an impact. So there's the content needs of the page itself when you arrive, let's mm -hmm. just call it. So actually, real quick, going back to that, yeah. that idea. So what would you say, you said, you know the cost potentially like what are some factors that students might be looking for like the top say top five pieces of information that they need right off the bat fair, fair enough so uh, we've done a lot of usability studies around what website particularly in this case microsites what uh, are the top factors that they're looking for mm -hmm. uh, as far as needs for content on the website and largely it's very pragmatic it's going to be like do you have the degree I'm looking for how much does it cost yeah. when do I graduate uh, the courses involved and the accreditation, and largely in that order. Okay. Um, it's going to be, and I've served, we've surveyed roughly about, I think at this point we've surveyed 12 of our schools across our portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we've got, you know, we've got a, a growing index. But if you look at it, that's probably largely ranking and consistent across the, the, the 11 or 12 mm -hmm. schools that we've worked with. Okay, cool. So um, if you get, if you're addressing those, it's going to help, re, you know, reduce, um, and we'll go into some of the other factors, but. Having that is going to be helpful. So mm -hmm. uh, if you get beyond the content and the needs there, obviously you got to have the value proposition, right? Why this school? Uh, why now? Well, actually, why this school? Uh, obviously, they're in a, you know, if they're moving away, moving from a, uh, awareness, maybe let's talk about that for a bit. So obviously, we're looking at students who have come to the idea they need to go back to school mm -hmm. um, with many reasons behind that. Uh, then they move into the awareness phase. Perhaps they don't know what school they want to. Maybe they, you know, I, I don't really know what I want, or I don't know which schools I want to visit, but I know there's lots out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that research process is probably the awareness phase. And then you go into the consideration. Maybe they've got a, a handful of schools that they probably have researched or begun researching. Um, and then obviously the decision phase is they've completed the form. They've chosen one or two schools and they decided to complete the inquiry mm -hmm. form. So if you look at that simple um, 
the value proposition is probably in that consideration, uh, in that into that uh, consideration phase, where you're looking as to why this particular school, why this school over another school, mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that they're going to look at. That obviously has a direct impact. If you're keeping your information not, you know, very general, you're going to get general results. If you're trying to position your school as being the school to select now, well, that's that, that's certainly helpful. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, um, not just the why the school, but also why now. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you, you know, we the third point I was looking at is incentivizing. We use a lot of incentivizing. Uh, we don't really like offer anything direct as far as like compensation, but what we're calling incentivizing is maybe raising awareness to, or raising urgency, perhaps with our um, uh, making them aware of the start date. We've got many graphical or page elements that are highlighting the start dates, application dates, uh, deadlines, uh, trying to raise that urgency and trying to get them to commit in that point. Mm -hmm. uh, that has helped. Uh, it's not surprising that the demand curve, meaning that um, we're seeing um, as we get two weeks to that to that uh, deadline, whether it be start or application, uh, there's a some increase in in capture rates. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be surprising. Yeah. So uh, and then it shouldn't be surprising that right afterwards you see it, you see it, they, drop off. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's around the incentivize. That's the third point. Uh, third point that I was, um, and probably when when we're talking about UX, I think the next two are probably the most relevant. Is obviously what I call friction and what I call anxiety. So friction are going to be something like actual something physically wrong with the page. For example, perhaps maybe maybe you've got these two competing buttons. Maybe you've got different. Op maybe you got two different call to actions. That's actually something physically impeding the user. Into com you know into committing right mm -hmm. that's something you want to avoid as well and that's traditional UX right that is going to be uh, you know working on uh, having a having your wording properly pop out uh, having a dark background with light uh, mm -hmm. font color so they can easily read things like that are going to be physical things that could inhibit or not inhibit so you want a frictionless environment that'll help your conversion rate and then the last bit I have is anxiety right and that's going to be more psychological. Um, let's just say we have a form field around uh, Social Security. You're going to be much. You're going to approach that you know, that form a lot mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. with that kind of critical piece of information. That request of critical piece of information. What are you doing with that? Um, certainly now with the heightened data security and all the all the um, the breaches of data that we have across the various networks. Obviously, people's security is becoming a greater issue and concern. So the whole reducing the anxiety and uh, reducing what we ask or how we're asking mm -hmm. uh, is going to be very critical to, to, uh, to uh, improving that conversion rate. So if you, you probably can, you know, there are many things along the way, but if you look at these five, that probably you can probably put yeah. these big five buckets. Yeah, no, um, I like that. That's great. You know, and, and again, I was trying to, uh, and we do a lot of this. Like for right now, what you're seeing now predominantly with our testing um, and what we do with our microsite, it's going to be around the friction and the anxiety and the incentives. Mm -hmm. um, the content's going to fit, it's going to probably fit more into the, you know, consideration and motivations. We have the right content on the page. Uh, value propositions, you know, are we addressing why this school? Mm -hmm. um, the comparison shopping that they're going to do and then the incentivize, well, that's obviously something that the brand team is working on and trying to raise their agency. But uh, largely, we've done a lot of testing. If you think about what we do physically right now, uh, is friction. We're doing a lot. Is um, so we do. We did 600 tests last year, and uh, roughly about 300 of those tests, we categorized as either adding something or removing something. Mm -hmm. Let's just say removing simple, um, maybe perhaps removing a video, perhaps removing a, a, a secondary call to action, perhaps it's removing. A uh, piece of content. The, the the varying pieces of what we remove across uh, uh, well, it was roughly about 150 some tests. They vary. Um, and then there are things that we actually very likewise, we, uh, very similarly, we added something. Like mm -hmm. We added a video or added a piece of content. Maybe we added an accordion. The the story is is that for the uh, our favorability rate, our success rate with tests that we added something mm -hmm. was uh, roughly 35%. So 35 out of the 35% of our tests we won. Mm -hmm. If I look at the stuff that we removed, we actually won 85% of the time. Interesting. So there's a theme developing there. Less, Less is more. Yeah. Right? 
So uh, obviously, uh, we perhaps are probably, you know, having too much content can create cognitive overload. Mm -hmm. Decision fatigue is a big thing in the user uh, in the usability world. What they're calling decision fatigue. If you are overloading the user with too much information, they will just as well, uh, even though with the best of intention, right? We want to give you, we want to arm you with the most. Mm -hmm. Most inc most information you have, so you you're an educated consumer. Well, that is not exactly what they're asking yeah. for. Um, they don't want to sit through in ten minutes of reading. They want to just kind of move on to the next step mm -hmm. and guide them through. So um, we're seeing that less is more with a lot of our testing. Interesting. Yeah, is it? Yeah. So out of curiosity, from a school that you know potentially has you know because I've even kind of struggled with this a little bit, this idea from an SEO standpoint, you know, a lot of the times you need to have a lot of content. Mm. And so, how do you reconcile those two pieces right. of the SEO sure. versus? Right. They're at odds, <laughs> like, right? Yeah. yeah. More content, and less content uh -huh. is working better. So they're directly at odds right. uh, at times. So uh, there are I don't want to call them tricks, but there are things that you can do to minimize the impact to UX. So mm -hmm. the idea is obviously add as much content you, as you can without impacting the UX, and we can do that through, for example, like accordions. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you guys have crossed over pages that say read more, right? Mm -hmm. Where they give you yeah. the abstract or maybe a simple paragraph, yeah. and you hit read more and expand. expand. That is actually a, a very clever way of getting the yeah. full page of content, but only showing a paragraph. And that is one example of, of something that can get you best of both worlds. Get you the content onto the page and still be read by, uh, by search engine crawl, uh, crawling um, techniques. And then and still yet uh, be able to not impact the UX and have too much page and push that lead form down. Because you really want to have that lead form above the page fold. Mm -hmm. And you, if you can entirely have the entire lead form above the page fold. Because really, when you, uh, without even looking, you're going to try to win the user over at first glance. Yeah. And if they see a lead form that looks really intimidating, and by intimidating, I mean number of, maybe the number of questions mm -hmm. is like uh, maybe 15 questions, they're going to be intimidated by the part. They're, they're going to be, there's that anxiety of completing that. Mm -hmm. um, that that's going to that's gonna be, oh, I don't want to bother with that now. They're going to come back and they're going to have that second hesitation, right? We want to avoid that. So what you want to do ideally is create a, a, the shortest lead form that you can and put it above the form so they can see it's really quite simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. From beginning to end, I can complete it within the screen. Now, if you've got to scroll, in, in times there, you do need to do that, but effectively you want to avoid that. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yeah, close. Totally. Yeah, I mean, again, it all it always goes back to this friction or anxiety. It, it, it's, it really does kind of fall in those two buckets. Yeah. So I guess when you're, when you're evaluating you know, different different websites. What is the number one kind of challenge issue or kind of design, I should say design issue that you see most frequently? That's a yeah. mistake, um, I should say, without well, saying gosh, mistake that mistakes, schools are making. You know, the, uh, largely it's going to be around information architecture. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? It's generally how do we organize our, our pages, our navigation, our contents, right? So what we're finding, again, if we were going back to what we, you know, back to our usability studies and what uh, what our, our user or prospective students want, they want, you know, do you have the degree I'm looking for? How much does it cost? And we make it actually very challenging for them. We actually can, uh, we have words like academics. Um, uh, we have words like programs. Word choice is actually a different thing. But uh, that can be a challenge. But the information, for example, we can bury it uh, in many different ways. Um, we seem to bury those uh, in navigation by calling it the wrong thing, or maybe having it organized by degrees. Mm -hmm. Because it seems that it, you know certainly from what we're seeing in usability studies that uh, prospective students are, are, are gravitating to a particular degree and, and and looking for that particular degree's information, whether it be around cost courses. They're not looking in generality. They're not looking into admissions and looking for cost mm -hmm. in, in by. Uh, tuition costs in general, they're looking at tuition costs particularly for this degree. Okay. It's a slight, it's a slight uh, little nuance, but uh, the nuance is, is actually quite impactful. So uh, obviously you do want to have a general declaration as to what your tuition is, but obviously what people are gravitating to is looking for that particular degree. Okay. And that's the way that, that the information is structured. So back to the, to the error, a lot of schools are not doing that specific degree information. They're really keeping things very general and very top line mm -hmm. uh, instead of gravitating. You can find your undergrad or the, the hierarchy of the data is really challenging and really big 
and can be like this mega site kind of issue going on, a lot of information again, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's very difficult to find the information you need on, on perhaps the school site. Yeah. So we can, you know, sense. if you look at our sites, they're really quite simple, online programs, admissions, and about the school. Mm -hmm. um, really quite simplistic. Yeah. And if you look at maybe the traditional partner schools that we work with, you'll see that there's elaborate, the, it's not just the naming conventions of what they call things, but also the the mega menus that they have make mm -hmm. it very challenging to get to a specific degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah, yeah, and and that's something that's hard to deal with. And and they've got challenges because they have so many like so many different degrees that they offer. Mm -hmm. Different Unlike, degrees, different modalities, yeah. different modalities, yeah. Yeah. areas of study, mm -hmm. uh, specializations, concentration, yeah. whatever they call it. Their their granularity is really yeah. quite challenging so that's that's generally you know if you get that wrong it makes it really quite challenging no matter how good your page is mm -hmm. if they're not getting to the right page yeah no it makes makes perfect sense that's the biggest challenge I'm seeing right now with the schools and it's something we're addressing too because we've done a lot of usability you know, it's not usability studies it's actually card sorting so basically one of the things that we do when we look at a site uh, or we're looking at our site we're actually taking a step back and looking at information by uh, providing card sorting so what that is is essentially uh, we'll put a, a table of, of how we think um, we think we want to organize the, the site and this, this card will say um, courses for degrees where would you put that into a navigation mm -hmm. and so they try to organize in the most crude sense try to organize for us and categorically organize it in, a, in an area or into buckets uh, of how they believe it should work mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised if people are more similar than they are different when with certain things yeah no that makes a lot of sense I don't know if that makes sense but no yeah, it does it, it, no, does. it does Let's see, actually, interesting. you've managed to answer all of my questions. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> no, you, actually, you outlining everything like this yeah, is great. I had, I had to do it so, because I was like, I meander and I talk too much. Oh, this is one of those things that could go all the... Uh, I, it could go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, I think for the article, obviously, they're looking for little tips, little little sound bites that could um, help them with their... And, and there's so many things that you can review. Um, obviously... I mentioned one is having that lead form above. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we want to keep the the questions to as little as possible. To as uh, asking as little, you want to make sure you, what you're asking as well isn't so um, isn't so challenging and create anxiety. So yeah. you want to be careful what you ask as well. You want to ask yourself, is it vital to what I use? Is it is necessary in that form to have this question? Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of us we have. How did you hear about us? Um, although that is is being asked for a lot of our partners. Uh, we've seen performance improve without it. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. um, you know, whether that warrants going back to school and having a conversation, we're, we're trying to figure mm -hmm. that out. Yeah. But having the number of fields is that. Um, we've had a lot of success right now with what, how we have, uh, what we've called our buttons. Mm. Um, so, obviously, I think we've gone through many iterations. I think that's probably one of the biggest, um, we've had the largest number of tests around is, is the, the buttons because it's the level of effort is very small. Mm -hmm. The impact can be really quite sizable. So we've gone things from being just the word submit yeah. to something like learn more mm -hmm. to something like uh, request brochure, download brochure now. Um, so we are now. Uh, I think right now we've got our winning variations. Of course, uh, it does vary. It's around the word request brochure now. So you have uh, the action, the item, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the urgency and, all yeah. put into one. Uh, we're also seeing success with multiple ones as well. Um, learn more, start now, and combining that into a bigger mm -hmm. button. So there are things, uh, doing the proper testing around the button can be really quite beneficial. Yeah, that's yeah, really, interesting. Really quick to get in the market and really just really some strong impacts. I think we've got one test, I think, that it lifted as much as like 54%. Wow. So that's um, wow. that's dramatic. Mm -hmm. That's certainly remarkable. Uh, I, I can't say that I have that for every test. But that was one that really was, that was great. pretty significant. Pretty yeah. significant, and I think it went from submit to something like request for sure. So cool. Yeah, very good. Um, I'm trying to think more friction stuff. Obviously, you don't want to have multiple call to actions. Yeah. Um, obviously, you, you don't want to you you want to um, like for example, one of the things that we want to test is having the form on not just the we have um, if you look at our, our site, all our forms are on the right, right side. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, we want to test it putting on the left. As people read left to right. Mm -hmm. Didn't Jordan do that with Mason or something? Mm -hmm. And she's okay. shown prominent success, and we want to try that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's actually put it on the left. Um, and here's another tidbit. Um, we have program finders in our site, right? 
one of the things that we've seen in usability studies is that people aren't using the traditional program finders or even uh, they're using either the menu navigation mm -hmm. or they're using the lead form directly to understand what they're using the program of interest field and pulling that down and looking to see what degrees we offer mm -hmm. before they submit. So oh. they, they're okay. using it as a list that, of, as a, as a, yeah. as a, a yeah. means of finding yeah. out do you have the degree I'm looking for. Yeah. And it's, they'll start there at the lead form and then go back and read the. Mm -hmm. Makes um, sense. Yeah, tells you that I've they're actually. Done that. I think I've oh, probably yeah. done that just oh, yeah. to like, yeah, this is fully like, okay, understand. This is what's available here. Yeah, so that's something we're trying to figure out too. Is like, you know, and so we have, for example, mm -hmm. the order of your fields as well. So we have now begun the. We have some schools that had the program of interest at the bottom. We are now moving those to the top, showing some success there mm -hmm. for that very nature. So yeah. trying yeah. to get those people who are. Who are those? It's the quick, right? Like, how can I find this information really quickly? Here's a drop down that says program of interest. I'm oh, find it right oh, away. I see you offer this degree. Make, Boom. Yeah. Easy. They, make it easy. For uh -huh. them. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, another thing that we've seen. Uh, again, we're going probably, this is probably going to be more into the motivation or the value prop. Again, addressing the need of finding out um, do you have the degree I'm looking for. We're seeing a lot of our, our, our um, if you look in a multi, multi page funnel, uh, let's just assume something like the home page. Um, obviously, the home page is meant to not be a transactional page. It's meant to guide you through to mm -hmm. find your right for your finding your next piece of content. And here, let's assume here again, do you have the degree I'm looking for? We're seeing a lot of success with testing the next uh, sequential page, which is like the online degrees page, which is a simple listing of our mm -hmm. of our degrees. We're seeing if you if we can make a simple list and raise it up higher above the fold, that we're seeing greater success with that. The clicking through immediately and then going to the program overview page. So it's almost one, two, three, mm -hmm. and four is now our ideal funnel. Um, and then they're getting to the program overview, which again is probably uh, what they really wanted all along, which should have all the information that we uh, that it should have the tuition, should have uh, courses on that page. And uh, most of our or most of our schools do have that. But we're seeing that if we can optimize that funnel, that has had the greatest success for mm -hmm. us, as opposed to coming from resources or other various other yeah. channels. If they get through um, and we can get them to the program overview, that seems to be the best scenario for okay. us. So funnel obviously plays a role in it, I think, and where they land, where they start, their journey is important as well. Yeah. We're going to have different conversion rates for the people who come from resources. And it's like right. it because they're coming from a, a phase of decision from being at, like maybe they were just looking at finding schools that offer online degrees that were really particularly crazy about this particular one, or, or maybe they were just investigating. But the, the intent seems to be a lot different. So having some coming in on certain pages can show intent, mm -hmm. and so we should optimize accordingly. That makes sense. Cool. Well, I think you actually gave yeah some really good stuff in here. Oh, knocked it out so, with three yeah. minutes to spare. Winners I knew I had to, I knew I had to come fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nicole, is there anything that you think is, might be missing? No, I mean, I All think right. this was super helpful and a lot of uh, it, a lot of good like information that we can use for an article and mm -hmm. for some different kinds of quotes and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. Thank you so much. Can we turn that off now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>